Hey there, this is Therese Skelly, and I am so excited that you are going to be listening to an episode of the Fiercely Brilliant Podcast. Do you like those two words? Fiercely Brilliant. My hypothesis is that you are here for a reason. We all are. Our souls have led us on journeys that have very often taken some twists and turns, and sometimes it's not pretty. Sometimes there's struggle and there's loss and there's challenge, and in the middle of that, there's always a way out. And it's those times that often lead us into our great life and work. So you're going to hear stories in these episodes of myself and other beautiful people that share the journey. They share how they got to the place where they're standing, working in their brilliance and being the powerful leaders that they are. So stay tuned and enjoy this episode. Hey, this is Therese Skelly, and this is another episode of the Fiercely Brilliant Podcast. You know, I like to talk about how the heck you get out there and really express your brilliance in the world. That feels these days like what my soul wants to do. So I either bring people on that are demonstrating brilliance, and we, we sort of share their journey stories, because I feel like we all have a story, and we're on this journey together. And sometimes it's really easy to just go, I don't know how it's going to work for me. Maybe I don't have enough and maybe they have it all together. And so I bring people that say, yeah, no, <laughs> I might look all shiny now, but if you knew the backstory and then we talk about hope and inspiration. And so today I want to talk to you about a concept called, you're not going to like the title. I'm just going to tell you that, right? Codependency, Blech, right? <laughs> so y'all know I used to be a psychotherapist. If you didn't know that, I used to be a psychotherapist for like 25 years. And so in addition to being a business coach, I actually have a master's degree in counseling and I practice as a therapist for 25 years. And while I let my license go, I still do it. Meaning I still work with people on their psychology all the time. I'm not practicing. I'm not saying I'm a practicing psychotherapist, but I'm saying I know a bunch of mindset tools, right? And so recently I wrote this book, Love-Based Mission, How to Create a Business That Serves Your Soul. And what's kind of special about this little book, it's not a how to do business book. It's how to be in business book. Because there's plenty, like if you check most business owners' bookshelves, oh my gosh, you're going to have stuff by Dan Kennedy on marketing and people on copywriting and web design and social media. Like there's a plethora of people that, like writing really good stuff on that. But I don't think there's so much written on how do you live out your mission in the world? How do you, how do you get past your psychology and the blocks and the, the stuff that doesn't serve you to really create a business that serves your soul? That's my slice. And so this book talks about you come into the, a business with patterns. And most of us, now I will tell you, my market is the people that are service-based business owners. So I'm not working with people in corporations. I'm not working with McDonald's franchise owners. I'm working with, not that I couldn't. <laughs> if you're in a corporation and want to grow, you know, message me. But usually the people I work with are selling themselves. And they usually are really like big hearted, just driven people who want to make a difference in the world. So raise your hand if that's you. Okay, I thought that was. There's a downside, right? Because what brings us is often the thing that keeps us hostage. So, so I want to talk about the term codependency. And you know, I, I kind of shy away. I, I don't like to, I don't like to go, you're this, and that means that. I, you know, and nobody likes to be labeled. But my hypothesis is when you have awareness, you have choice. I live by that tenant. When you have awareness, you have choice. And most of what we do, like 95% of what we do, we're not even aware of. We don't understand the drivers. We don't understand the motivations. We don't understand why, like, God, why can't I make this work? It's not that I'm not smart enough. It's not that I'm not a hard worker. Or it's not that I'm not willing to invest. Like, what the hell is it? So let me tell you, okay? So the hypothesis of this book is that We are actually wired for a big mission. 
if you're hanging out with me, if you're a mission-driven, heart-centered, conscious visionary, there's a part of your soul that understands like, you're here for great things. You're here to really make a difference. And especially now with what's going on, ah, we need everybody stepping up. Because these are unknown times and we need people stepping up and be just whatever you do, whatever your leadership is, whatever your little slice, we need you. And your soul is going, ping, go, get out there. But if you're like a lot of people, maybe you've had trauma, maybe you've had poor modeling, maybe you have just had relationships that maybe, you know, kind of maybe dinged you a little bit. So there's the, the bigness of your soul, and that's what I call the mission. But then there's the smallness of yourself that wants to stay small, safe, and stuck. And it's that dynamic that's like, how do you navigate that? Right? So many people I know, I, I work primarily with women. So many women have a challenge stepping up, being really visible, really visible, really seen, really powerful and potent, just standing in their power. And I'm going to talk about why. Okay. So this is um, from the work of Melanie Beatty. Melanie Beatty is probably the top, one of the top researchers and writers on codependency. So I just want you to ask, ask yourself this, is it yes or no? And again, no judgment. I'm not shaming you with this. I'm not looking at you going, really? You did that? Because trust me, if there was the codependent queen, could be this one. <laughs> so, so anything that I have accomplished, anything I've overcome is because I literally had my nose in it like a puppy rubbing, rubbing into shit, right? I, this, is, this is not just clinical knowledge that I'm imparting on you. This is, oh yeah, been there, done that. Made that mistake 900 times, okay? So again, no judgment. All right, so tell me if you say yes to this one. Do you feel responsible for other people, their feelings, thoughts, actions, choices, wants, needs, well-being, and destiny. Now, obviously, if you have a toddler, you are physically responsible for that person's care. Beyond that, though, and the way this shows up in business is, like, strangely, I, I, well, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not strangely. I've done a whole bunch of work. I've done so much personal growth work that I don't take it personally when one of my clients doesn't maybe get the result they wanted. I do everything I can, but I know sometimes there's reasons why people don't they can't get it. And I will have coaches that are clients of mine come and say, they're beating themselves up. Oh, and it's like they're taking on the responsibility of somebody else. Or maybe it's your partner or your child or something where you're just like, oh, like I feel so responsible for that. Is something I did. Okay, just, just yes or no. The next one, do you feel compelled to help solve their problems or to take care of their feelings? Have you ever, um, have you ever dated projects? <laughs> oh, hello. I, I just love him better. He'll, he'll just be so filled with love because he's dating me. Then all his, blah, blah. That, that's not a good strategy, but done that a few different times. Have you ever taken on client projects? You know, Everything in you, like if you were to create a client avatar and say, okay, who is my ideal client? Who's the one I should serve? Who's the one I should not serve? And you go, oh, maybe I could help them. Okay, that's another one. Do you find it easier to feel and express anger about injustices done to others than injustices done to you? I think there's a part of us that we can fight for ourselves. We should be enraged sometimes we should when our boundaries get crossed we should be like uh-uh 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 but a good codependent person will be like well it's not that bad like you talk yourself out of like you're not worth fighting for and this is why i go you know my, my clients used to call me mama t because i'm like oh hell no not on my watch not on my watch is anybody even you gonna put yourself down or give up on yourself but is it easier to like fight for the underdog as opposed to I'm fighting for me, which means I have the boundaries that I need to have in place to make my life work. I say no when I say no, because I have to come from a place of fullness and not emptiness. Okay. Do you feel safest and most comfortable when you're giving to others? 
I was talking to a client this morning. Oh, I love this woman. She's, she's so tapped into her soul mission. I mean, she is like, this woman's going to be rocking it. Like she so knows. And I'm like, okay, I'm hearing give, 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 give. What about receiving? Now, thankfully she's, she's conscious enough. And I did some clearing with her, like, hold on. Like if in about, in about another minute, this cup's going to be empty, right? You cannot give from depletion. But if you are wired that you only are valuable or people only love you when you're giving to them and you are depleting yourself, you're going to burn out. Okay? Do you feel insecure and guilty when somebody gives to you? How easy is it to say yes? Like if I say, I want to give you a free session or I want to buy you dinner or I think I'll pay for you for a massage. Wink, wink, y'all could do any of those things for me. That, those would all be big yeses. <laughs> like just today, I was in Starbucks. I never had this experience. And I drove up and somebody said, your coffee's been paid for. Ah! I was like, you know what? Thank you, universe. I received that. I didn't have to go, oh no, oh no. Crap, I gotta better go pay for somebody. Like, of course someday I'll do that. But I took it in and I literally looked up and I'm like, gotcha. That reminds me to receive more. That reminds me that the universe has my back. And I'm receiving. So I really want you to look at the dance with of receiving. That's, um, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> but we need to talk about that. Do you feel bored, empty, worthless if you don't take care of somebody else, solve a problem, or have a crisis to deal with? You know those people that, um, like, like, just so calm. And, you know, I, I remember back in the day. You know, have you ever dated, like, the, like, He's just so nice. He's kind of nice. Because if you're kind of addicted to drama and taking care of people, you like the unavailable ones. You like the ones that don't call and create the like, eh, you know, like that's like really dysfunctional. But if you're addicted to being in that spin, I remember I had a, a guy one time, he was a lovely man. I was like, it feels like we're an old married couple. Oh, good God. Today I would kill to feel like an old married couple. Like that I know is like, ah, oh, yummy but it wasn't loaded with chaos and drama. And so I, I, I missed. And so just look at yourself, how wired. I mean, I get hooked into this with my own kids. I, I do. I just, I'm like, oh, recently my son broke his, ank his ankle, his heel actually. And I'm like, oh my God, I got to go grocery shopping. I got to get, I, ha, ha. you know, and, and my friends are like, he's 25. He could do it himself. And I was like, oh, oh, that didn't occur to me because I've, you know, their dad died a few years ago. I've been doing everything for them and I'm that super mama. And I was like, oh hell, I had a little relapse there. Like, I guess he is 25. He, he could probably, you know, <laughs> just like, <sighs> so for me, I get hooked to the kids. For you, what are you getting hooked at? Like if a client has a problem, do you dive? Now there's one thing to, to give what feels like, you know what? I want to give this to you. This, this is, this is just because I feel good. Not I have to, or oh, I get that hit of approval and affection, and oh my God, somebody needs me. Yeah. And again, used to be me, so there's no judgment. Are you often unable to stop talking, thinking, and worrying about other people's problems? Do you lose interest when your own life, when you're in your own life, when you're in love? E -e. How many of us have done that? You know, those girlfriends that abandon you when they got a man and then when they break up, then they're back. It's just like, are you giving up yourself? Women have been trained to give themselves up. And so, you know, this is a big one. Do you stay in relationships that don't work and tolerate abuse in order to keep people loving you? That's a really sad one. That's a really, like, think of, think of the depth of that. It's, it's like, the pain of being alone or not wanted is potentially greater than the pain of being neglected and not wanted. That's kind of a mind fuck, right? And so again, no shame, blame. Like it, it's just, this is just awareness. This is observation. Do you leave bad relationships only to form new ones that don't work either? Mm, hello. And they're done that. How many of you were like, just had that problem with that last guy or that last girl? What happened? How in the world does this play out? Plays out in your business because if you, again, I'm talking about business, but it's all, it's all related, right? We, I do business coaching, but it actually is related to life coaching. It's actually related to transformation and spirituality. It's all, in my book, the same thing. 
unfortunately, most people are more willing to go, oh, my business isn't working, I better get help, right? And so I usually work with people on their business, but it's actually working on themselves. So what do you do? When you have awareness, you have choice. I'm gonna say it again. Notice the top five disappointing clients or professional situations. Um, I know for me, years ago, I had a couple team members that sucked. Like they were great people. They were awesome people, but they would not deliver on time. And so if I were thinking like a business person, I would say, I deserve to have people that are their word. I deserve to be able to count on if this is the deadline, the work product happens. But because this is, this is probably like 10, eight to 10 years ago, I was like, oh, but I don't want to hurt them. They're my friends. Oh, she's going through a divorce. So notice where the focus is. It's not on what's best for freaking me. What does my business, my soul, my life, my energy, what does that need? And that is the number one, as opposed to, oh, but I don't want to upset them. They might not like me. They might be hurt. So ask yourself, what are the top five personal or business challenges you've had lately? And I'm guessing in those challenges, there might be some, co some of those traits, but it's sort of in that family. When did you give yourself up? How did you stop speaking your truth? Did you make somebody or somebody's needs more important than yours? Did you worry that if you weren't all that for everybody, you would lose love or lose your identity or sense of self? See, those are the, that's, that's what this book is about. And if you want to get it, it's just happy, I'm sorry, treeskelly.com forward slash mission book. Okay, treeskelly.com forward slash mission book. You really should read it because it talks about what drives us and then it gives a bunch of exercises on how to get out of it. The first one is, what did I say? When you have awareness, you have choice. So you become aware. So literally dissect those patterns. Write about, okay, this, this was a shit show. This thing blew up. Oh, this went so bad, so bad, so freaking bad. Write about that. And then notice where was the codependency? Where was the weak boundaries? Where were you trying to get approval? Now there's many ways to heal this. this you might have to come to see me to get, get you out of this, but some ways are, if you could do it again, what would you do? If you weren't worried about approval, getting your needs met, people pleasing, what possible other scenarios would there be? You know, one of the things I, I kind of say is, you know, back in the day, they used to have, years ago, they have those bracelets, WWJD, what would Jesus do? And the goal was to reorient the minds of a believer that would say, oh, in this situation, if I, if I thought of what Jesus would do, I would respond that way. So with my clients, I say, WWTS, what would Therese say? And if I say, okay, in that situation, what would I tell you? They'd say, oh, you would tell me to fight for myself. Uh-huh doesn't have to be trees. It could be God. It could be your partner. It could be an angel. It doesn't matter who it is, but there's got to be some place where you can go, okay, my best thinking is just leading to kind of shit right now. My best thinking is old patterning and old programming that has me undervaluing myself. So I'm going to call somebody else's thinking in. Oh yeah. Therese would tell me, boom, boom, boom. Or, you know what, what would Oprah tell me? Oh, hell, I know what Oprah would say. She'd say, boom, boom, boom. It doesn't even have to be a person you know. It just could be what that person, it, it's a concept of modeling, right? I have to know that there's somebody out there that does this really well. Some woman I know has got to have better boundaries than I do. Somebody out there stands up for herself and owns her value and is a strong woman. So if I could come up with, come up with that like avatar, what would they tell me to do right now? To identify the pattern and you replace it like re, like you reimagine it. You create new neural pathways that way. You actually really do. Another part is it could be, you know, I, let me show you my little, my little guy here. I use a pendulum and I can show you, is this yours or is it somebody else's? Meaning, is it an energy that's living in you or are you picking it up? 
So you can do that by just asking your body, like, is this mine? This feeling of I can't ask, or this feeling of God, I feel so bitchy if I say no, or this feeling of I don't deserve. Just first, just a little, just kind of put your energy here and you just go, is that mine? And if you get a yes, then it's yours. And that means it's either a part, maybe it's a little child part, or maybe it's just something you learned and you picked up. If you get a no, it's not mine. That means, hark, you just swam into something because there is a lot of collective stuff that we are dealing with right now, right? So if you get this like, but I, I can't say no, and you get, no, it's not mine. You could ask if you want to, whose is it? It could be the generation ahead behind you. It could be that was how your mother was raised. It could be, well, that's, that's you know, your culture or your religion. That's what women were trained to do and or be. It's not even freaking yours. So you basically kind of go, whoosh, return to sender. Not with shame, but just like, clean this up. It's not mine. When you have awareness, you have choice. So I want you to, it's kind of the road less travel, right? We want to look outside of ourselves. We want to be like, oh, I need a new banner and I need more Twitter followers. Oh, you know, if I could start doing Instagram stories, that would solve everything. I would love to do Instagram stories. I don't know how to do that yet. <laughs> so if you got tips, send me Instagram tips. Um, and we need those things. But if at the bottom of you, if the problem is that you're not being the powerful being because of whatever, None of those things are going to matter. It really, you must work on your being. You must work on how do I show up if you are the commodity in the business, right? Ah, <sighs> okay, Mama T. Here, let me give you a, let me give you a, boom, go do it. All righty. So it's been really fun to be with you here today, and I would love to hear from you. Like, how did this land? Did you learn something? If so, what? Feel free. Reach out to me. T S at TeresaKelly.com. Seriously, I want to hear what you liked about it. And wherever you're watching this, leave a review. Like if it's on whatever, whatever platform you're watching this, this podcast, it would be really awesome to leave a review. So peace and blessings. And remember, stand up for yourself. That's what Teresa would tell you. All right, Mwah. peace and blessings. Bye now. Hey, if you liked this episode, I'm going to encourage you to head on over to Amazon and buy my book, love-based mission, how to create a business that serves your soul. A lot of the concepts we talk about in this podcast are about how your soul shows up in your business and in your life. And so if you are really mission-driven and want to make sure you're expressing as much of that in your life as you can, grab the book on Amazon. It's a very easy read with lots of practical tools. Love-based mission, how to create a business that serves your soul. Thanks. Bye.